Okay, so we are picking up trees from Greg Peterson in the Urban Farm. That's what's happening behind us here. So we're waiting for our trees and everybody's doing the same. So you can see, if you guys are coming down, you're gonna need to have a mask on. And I know that he's got a scheduling thing that they put together. We talked to Janice and apparently that's going really well. So even without COVID, they're planning on doing that in the future. Um, either way, if you guys are gonna come down here, make sure you get your appointment. Um, I'll leave a link down below to their website. We're getting excited for the trees that we have coming. We got a combination of some, some potted trees and also some bare root trees. Usually it's mainly bare root trees, but a little bit of a mix up with Dave Wilson. Uh, so our mulberry trees uh, are actually in pots. Either way, I think we've got uh, something coming up here shortly. So I'm here with Greg Peterson. He is the man with the plan. Uh, you guys, a lot of you guys I'm sure already know who he is. We talk about him all the time. Um, so, thanks. Yeah, in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> I figured that. <laughs> so we're here, today is Saturday. He's got one more weekend. How many more weekends of this? Yeah, we're just gonna do one day next Saturday, the 6th of February. Okay, and then um, appointments. I know you guys are doing appointments this year, so does everybody need to sign up for an appointment or kind of what's the deal with next weekend? That's good. If you can get an appointment, if you can sign up for an appointment, it's listed on our website, but we, have, we, don't, we don't have that many trees left. Yeah. Really, and um, so you'll be able to place an order online this week for them, okay. uh, and then come down and pick them up next weekend. We may have a few left over if you just show up, but I suggest pre-ordering if you can. Okay, awesome. So you got trees, now you have things besides trees as well, right? We have uh, trees, uh, we have dwarf black mulberries, one of my favorite things these mm -hmm. days. Same here. Uh, there's a few grapes left, a few olives left, and then we have all the supplements. Here's the thing. Growing trees, really any kind of plant in the desert, we have to do extreme tree care to make sure that they thrive here. And extreme tree care is how you plant it. So you can't just plant it in native soil. You need to plant it with, we say 60% planting, some kind of planting mix in the hole. Mm -hmm. And then we're highly suggesting that you add mycorrhiza, which is a micro, microbial fungal mm -hmm. additive that helps the roots of the trees. Azomite, which is a giant boost of vitamins for your uh, tree and worm castings and what we have people do is mix that all up in the wheelbarrow along with the planting mints in the native soil then plant your tree but that's just the first step of extreme tree care step number two is putting a basin around your tree a six foot diameter basin with at least six inches of woody mulch because what we're trying to do there is mimic nature and how things work in nature like in the forest yep. leaves fall sticks fall deer come along and do what they do and they make healthy soil so that's what we're trying to mimic in the basins around the tree but we're not quite done yet <laughs> <laughs> extreme tree care by doing this these trees absolutely thrive thing number three is some kind of shade and we have found that some kind of ground cover either cow peas which we give away here at the lot or sweet potatoes drops the temperature of the soil 40 to 60 degrees in the summer. Wow. Which is the difference between your trees thriving or not. Sure. And then uh, regular fertilizing. Yeah. So we do the granular fertilizing and then what uh, Tom Spellman at Dave Wilson Nursery calls the silver bullet. And that is foliar feeding, actually spraying on the leaves in the trunk of the tree. So that's our extreme pear uh, method that we use here. Uh, and it's really important to do that. And not just fruit trees, but for any plants you're planting here, because we just had our two hottest summers in a row. It was horrible. <laughs> it, it was, it was, and I've lived here 54 years. So yeah, it's, yeah it was crazy. Yeah, I agree. So now as far as fertilizer, bioflora crumbles, do you have bioflora crumbles? We do have bioflora crumbles. Awesome, you guys know how much we talk about the natural fertilizers that we create on the farm, but I'll tell you what, if we did not have that, bioflora crumbles is the only thing that we would use. And we've talked about that in the past. Now you've got big bags, right? Yeah, we sell it in 50 pound bags. 50 pound bags, you guys, you know you cannot get those in the nurseries here all year round. It's pretty much just here. So you got plenty of that if they can sneak in here some way in the next week. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So, and then again, um, hop online. We're gonna have links down in the description below so you guys can check out the Urban Farm. Now you can do more than just fruit trees, right? Oh yes, all year we have all kinds of education. In fact, starting next month, we're gonna start doing a monthly uh, fruit tree chat. What do you need to do with your fruit trees every month? It'll be a live hour long Zoom event. Um, we have, at the end of February, we have our Seed Up Saturday, which is a three hour seed event for education 
online. So we'll be doing monthly stuff online to teach people how to grow food in their in their yards. Because I believe the single most important thing we can be doing right now is figuring out where our food comes from and learning how to grow our own. Amen to that. It was great to see you again, as always. Right back at you. Keep up your good work, man. Absolutely. <laughs> we're going to do it together. So that was cool to get a chance to spend time with Greg. But now we've got some trees on the ground. So if Lori wants to look at those, we've got our bare root trees. Now, we've got four bare root trees, and then we have six potted trees we picked up. So we got six potted black Pakistan mulberries that we'll be planting tomorrow. So probably won't get that on video for you guys today, but we'll show it to you guys once we get them in. Now we got potted ones because they were shorted on their bare root trees from Dave Wilson. Kind of a bummer there, but the potted ones look fantastic and we know they're alive because they have green leaves on all of them. <laughs> so now these are our bare root trees. Now there's gonna be three trees here. These three specific trees I'm gonna be planting uh, later this afternoon, I'm going to do a separate video for you guys because I want to talk about that particular variety and how well it actually does here in Arizona and produces very good. What I am going to try to get on video for you guys today is this tree right here. So this one actually has some very sentimental value for me that I'll share with you guys as we go. But before we get to that, the, these just got here. Um, they're definitely starting to dry. We don't want that to happen. I'm filling this with water right now. I'm gonna put a couple of cups of vitamin B1 in here and get these bare root trees soaking. Okay, so that'll give you an idea of the roots on these trees. They look fantastic. Got it nice and deep in the bucket here. These are gonna sit now for, goodness, at least a couple hours for these three trees that we're gonna plant later this afternoon right here on the Eastern Orchard. But we have another tree that we wanna to get to planting here very, very shortly with you guys now. So before I forget, Caitlin, Hi, it was really cool meeting you this morning. Um, good luck with those berries that you're getting. You're gonna have to let us know how that raspberry does. All right, so we've got all this stuff that we wanna get done uh, here today. I definitely wanna get this one on camera for you guys, but we've got some prep work to do. But before I forget, I wanna make sure to remind you guys that next Saturday, next Saturday, is the first Saturday in February, so we will be having our live stream at around three o'clock Phoenix time. Uh, we'd love to see you guys there. All right, Lori and I have uh, got some scrambling to do. We need to get these trees in the ground. So Lori's over there, she's uh, letting out the chickens and we're gonna go and plant this tree. And I just kinda, I'm gonna share that story with you. But before I do, we had a lot of rain this week and we had actually some grapple, which is like this mix of snow and hail. Actually, our son was with us and he was able to make a little snowball out of it. So that was kind of neat. And then what I wanna look at is right here, Alan, we've got our rain gauge right here, so thank you. And it looks like we had just over three quarters of an inch. So it rained most of the week kind of off and on. Three quarters of an inch is what we wound up getting. And we've got more rain coming, it looks like, next week. So it's always good to see that. Uh, made it a little bit dicey with getting the pigs fed every day and all that kind of stuff, keeping that dry. But we got it done. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this tree planted. We're here on the Western Orchard and the tree that we're gonna be planting is a weeping Santa Rosa plum tree. Now we had one on the old farm and it didn't actually produce any fruit for us while we were there, but we did notice uh, when we went over a few months back and met the new owners that they did get some fruit, which is really exciting. So now I did wanna share with you guys um, the importance of this tree for me. And it's actually very important for really kind of all of us because the fact that we're here on YouTube, a big part of that is actually my dad. And I don't know how much I've, sh I've shared of that before, but uh, we lost, uh, I lost my dad um, almost four years ago. And if you guys have been following us, you know that this channel is almost four years old and that's not a coincidence. So I grew up uh, mainly with my dad in Gardena, California, and we had uh, four fruit trees that were in the backyard of our little house in Gardena in Los Angeles. And one of those was a Santa Rosa plum. And I remember as a kid coming home from school in June and eating these amazing plums. And that, that was a really cool tree. My dad loved those trees as well. And what was kind of funny is we had a peach tree that was a weeping peach tree. And every year it would produce hundreds of fruit that were just infested with these fruit flies. They never really tasted all that good. And I've since tried to figure out what tree it was. And it turns out it was probably an ornamental tree <laughs> that's actually not designed to have uh, edible fruit. So it's kind of funny. We didn't know that when my dad was alive, but we've come to find that out. 
So this Weaving Santa Rosa is kind of my tribute to my dad and I'm looking forward to getting the tree in the ground. Wanted to share that with you guys because it means a lot to me personally and I'm hoping that uh, we get some fruit. So we're gonna go ahead and get the tree in the ground now. What we're obviously gonna do is what you normally see us do. We have some wood chips on the ground back there that we've had down for, oh, about two weeks now. So we're gonna go ahead and get the chips pulled back as usual and get ready to get this tree planted. We've talked about it before, but with the bare root trees, you gotta kinda follow the uh, pattern that the roots are gonna give you. In this case, I've got a couple of uh, roots that were really long I went ahead and pruned because they're too long for us being able to dig our, our first ring or channel that we're gonna irrigate in. So you can see the uh, as far as the roots. So these roots are <laughs> really shallow. It's a Miro rootstock, so not usually a fan of Miro, although we've, we've done okay with it. But it's Miro rootstock, so it's, it's a bit shallow and obviously it will go out, which is what we're gonna encourage it to do. The other issue that we're gonna face here is gonna be the height of the tree. Because it's a weeping tree, we wanna allow it to do just that. So we are gonna keep that height, so you're gonna see that I'll also be staking this tree. In addition, uh, one of the things that we haven't, I don't think, talked about before is where you place the grafting point um, or kind of that opening from the graft. Here is the uh, graft point here, right here. Hope you picked that up on camera. So and there's kind of a nub here from where the graft was. So I like to face that north so it doesn't have the so southern sun beating right down on it. So what you'll notice as we're planting this tree and kind of arranging it, we'll have that uh, facing north. Okay, I need to get this thing in the ground. So Lori's gonna grab uh, some water. We are gonna be mixing vitamin B1 and fish emulsion. We'll be putting it down at the bottom of the hole. And as we fill in the hole, you'll also see that we're using it as we fill the dirt in. And then amendments, Greg did talk about a lot of amendments. You guys know we don't normally do a lot of those here. A lot of people believe strongly in those. We've had luck without it. Um, but with the bare root trees, we definitely do some amendments, hence the B1 and the fish emulsion. And also you'll see I mixed in the actual dirt that, or soil that they were using to store the trees at the urban farm. I use that to slightly amend the soil that's going back into the hole. That'll allow us to have that uh, loose dirt that we need to get the, the tree planted. Okay, enough yakking, I need to get this thing planted. I think we're ready to get the irrigation done. Let's see how we're doing. And make sure that we've got a good channel leading out to the tree. So this will give you an idea of what we're going to be doing with this tree. Now, obviously when it comes to this type of tree, we would typically be cutting these off about here or so. And we may get some dieback, but when we planted this one last time on the old farm, we pruned about what you saw there, took the top down a little bit, but I want this to be able to kind of weep and come down and really kind of be able to sit under it. That's kind of my ultimate goal. So you can see we painted up a little bit higher with that white tree trunk to protect the trunk itself from sunburn. And you can see I have it double staked. So I use nice tall seven foot T-posts because this tree again is going to be taller. But because that root was actually so small, very unstable, we wanted to make sure because the tree itself is so tall that we did get it staked. Now, as soon as this tree starts to take off in the spring, probably come summer and definitely by next fall, we should be able to go ahead and remove these. But for now, it'll keep this tree from toppling over. One of the things that Greg talked about today is he talked about the importance of a nice big, like six foot ring. You know, we're big fans of that big outer ring that we do, but this is the inside temporary ring. Even with this, I'm guessing it's about three or so feet across, maybe four feet across. And again, it's just our temporary ring for the little tree with the little roots. Once we get our rings around the outside, we're probably pushing closer to eight feet, maybe a little bit more. 
So last thing we'll have to do, get some mulch in here, get this nice and heavily watered. But again, we've got to slide on over and get the rest of these other three trees planted. And that one's going to be for you guys next week. So one of the things that uh, my dad really enjoyed was watching the updates and getting updates on the farm. And of course, at the time we weren't doing this. So I would just tell him, he'd talk, we'd talk every week, talk about what was going on on the farm. And you know, it's not in my belief system as a Christian, but you know, I believe that there are just things about God that I don't know, and I'm comfortable with that. And one of the things that I really kind of hope, and one of the reasons why we started this YouTube channel, is because I just have that hope that, you know, maybe God will let my dad look down on times like this and see something like this, and he can smile at what's going on. So, Dad, if you're watching, I hope you like this one. <laughs>